Welcome back to a bit of a windswept Angling 360 and it's game time, apparently. Aye, game time. As you all know, trout is a game fish and we're going to try and catch trout from various rivers, lochs, using a variety of different techniques. Ta ta tactics, techniques, methods. Um, yeah. It will be fly fishing, lure fishing, And then the controversial one, <laughs> uh, feeder fishing, which we're doing today. But we're not starting with brown trout, we're not starting with sea trout, we're starting with we're starting, Arctic yeah. char, not Arctic, Arctic <laughs> char. Yeah, special wee fish, Arctic char. Thought I, to be. I think probably the nicest fish we've got. Aye, looks wise, they're stunning, absolutely stunning wee fish. Uh, but we, they are wee fish uh, in this country. We'll talk a wee bit more about the Arctic char probably later on. But aye, that's the plan. Char today, and then like as Gordon says, work our way through the different sort of methods, tactics that we can we can target trout with, and hopefully get an abundance of different different species, different strains, different variants. But I've been on a wee personal quest the last few weeks for the sea trout, yeah. grabbing a couple of those here and there. Um, had a few nice fish, popped a few pictures up as we do. <laughs> Alex is yet to vote for them yet, but I will get a video on them as well. Stunning fish, hard fighting fish. Aye. Um, but these char. Hopefully, if we're lucky enough to get a couple of days. Fingers crossed we'll, we'll get the odd one today. We usually do quite well here, so I'll probably put the kiss of death on it, but. Usually. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Bye. He's no superstitious, but I am. That's the plan, and I'm looking forward to this one. Stunning place, but I know. Right, look at that. We're ready, mate, to stag this morning. <laughs> so, aye, we'll see you in a bit, hopefully, with a couple of fish. Right, one fishing. Thank you very much. Better one. So just as we finished the intro there, I was just about to go on about how much I love this style of fishing because the majority of times you catch brown trout after brown trout after brown trout but there's always that anticipation that the next fish is going to be a char well we don't really get that today because we've got what we came for off the bat first chuck uh, and it's a nice wee fish actually it's not the brightly coloured male that we do love to catch here it is a lovely fish all the same Little female, Arctic char. Lovely conditioned fish. A lot more silver than than the males. Now hopefully we will get a male later on, we can have a wee look at that as well. But yeah, Arctic char, straight away. Can't really complain about that. They are wiry little numbers. Lovely wee char. Get back to it. Game time. Trout are usually the, the, the well, will, will be, trout will be the, the star of the show uh, in this little vlog that's going to run probably from now until, well, until October the 6th, the end of the season. But char, 
Arctic char, that's what it's all about today. I love them. I absolutely love them. The most interesting, special little fish that, that we have in the waters, in my opinion. They arrived, well, at the Ice Age. They're kind of a relic from the Ice Age, so to speak. As the ice sheet kind of came down over Britain, it pushed the Arctic char down into the sort of, well, the lower regions, you know. And then as the, the ice retreated at the end, they stayed. They, 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 they kicked about. They liked it. <laughs> they liked it that much. But unlike char, north, well, say above the Arctic Circle, I think every population of char above the Arctic Circle uh, runs to sea. They run to sea and they come back to fresh water to spawn. Here, it's completely different. They're landlocked. When that ice retreated, for some reason or another, the char in these lochs stayed in the lochs. And it's resulted in them being completely different from each other. And depending on what lock you fish, the, the char will be com completely different. They'll look, I think like it's a phenotype. Their phenotype is completely different. Uh, in terms of, well, the phenotypes, it's based on their habits. It's based on their, their surroundings and how they've evolved over time. Some char, the majority of char in Scotland are, are benthic, I think, is the, the terminology for it, where they inhabit the really deep areas of the loch, right at the very bottom, that benthic zone at the bottom of these lochs. And they feed on things like plankton, zooplankton, things like that. And then you've got more pelagic style char. A wee bit rarer in Scotland, but they'll feed, they'll feed sorry, higher up in the water and they'll feed on uh, small fish, minnows, uh, and, and insects and things like that as well. So the broad range of different types of fish, they're all char, but they just look completely different and their habits are completely different. Just makes them really interesting uh, and a joy to actually come in and fish for. Similar to trout. Trout are very much the same. Now, we're catching trout here in the benthic zone, right at the very bottom of the lochs. Later on, hopefully, we're going to move down to another loch and have a go on the lures. And we'll be catching fish much higher up in the water column. Again, completely different habits, completely different phenotype. Now, I'm no expert on char, but that's my take on it anyway. I'm hunkered down under the umbrella. I'm afraid you're on your own here, mate. Oh shit. That may be you. Right, shit, why don't you deal with us? Well, this is more typical of fishing in these locks. I'm not going to complain. Lovely little wild brown trout like that. Always a joy to catch. Lovely. Still hunkered down under the brolly. Alex has got a pretty substantial bend in that rod.
two such packs. Would I lead nine? That's it. Feels heavy. This wind's playing havoc. If I'm fishing today. Oh, yeah, where's this going? Yeah, yeah, still there. There we go. Another nice wee wild round trout. Don't get much more bonnier than that. We'll do as well, so we get a chance for this wind kind of eased off a bit. I'll show you, talk you through my setup. We'll get him. That's him back. Right, so I'm using the alarms, and there's a few reasons for that. I occasionally fall asleep and don't want to miss a bite. But other things when you're filming, or if I'm filming Alex or trying to get some shots or whatever, you can't always keep an eye on the rod tip. So that's one of the reasons why I tried this technique today. Um, the rod closest to these is get the maggot feeder um, and this rod closest to me I tried this last year using chopped worm and a window feeder you pinch of maggots and then just closing it off with uh, some ground bait some krill ground bait and it did produce a couple of bigger fish bigger trout and a bigger char it's not as busy as the maggot feeder rod but there is that potential of a a bigger fish Oh, there's a bite right on to it. Or was it the wind? Aye, so that's why. That's why I opt for using the, the alarms today. Well, the sport, as it always is at this place, well, usually is at this place, it's pretty hectic, it's pretty non-stop. The brown trout seem to have moved in though. This one, you just never know. Feels decent. That means it's tiny. <laughs> Well, as Alex says, sometimes it can be hectic. I'm not going to lie, but I'm a little bit out of puff again. Got a chance to sit in my arse once. But we do have a couple of spectacular wild brownies. That's Alex's one. And that's the wee one I've just. That's away. We'll get a wee under, grow, uh, under GoPro uh, uh, that thing. <laughs> under what? <laughs> We'll get the GoPro out and get an underwater shot release is what I was trying to say. But look at that. Keep them in the net. It's been absolutely mental <laughs> this morning. The rods get off left, right and centre. The majority of them are trout. But the odd char creeping in there. It three early on. And it's been quite quiet on the char front for a few hours. But... I was expecting another one. This one's still quite lively. But in amongst the trout, another beautiful little char. Look at the pink spots on that. White piping on the fins. And this is another female. 
So they're not as colourful as the males, but still absolutely stunning. And I think that's number, that's number four today. Plenty of fish this morning, four char, loads of trout. <laughs> but that's expected, it's expected to get more trout than, than char on most of these locks. But yeah, Gordon touched on feeder fishing for trout, uh, bait fishing in general for, for trout is one of these things. Now we said it was controversial, I wouldn't really say controversial, but it is frowned upon by by certain members of the, the angling community and that's fine. No, if, they, if it's not for them, it's not for them. But it's so effective. It's effective if you do it right. Now that's the key, the key, you got to do it properly. Uh, and I don't want to come across preachy here, but we've all seen it before. Rods propped up on tree branches, I cast in and left for hours at a time. No one likes to see that, that's not what we're looking for. So, the setup I think is quite important. And if you are used to feeder fishing, whether it be for roach, for tench, for any sort of coarse species, you know how effective it is and you know how sensitive and how finely tuned that style of fishing can be. And I think it's really important to take that sort of finesse <laughs> uh, of your course fishing and bring it here and do the, exactly the same thing and it works an absolute treat so yeah it's not cheating it's not lazy it's as active as any feeder fishing and we've seen the results it works it works an absolute treat and I love it I just love watching uh, a quiver tip now I'm fishing quiver tips Gordon spoke about his approach earlier on his snooze proof approach <laughs> Uh, yeah, fishing alarms and it's worked absolutely perfectly. Nice <laughs> Too many fish. But yeah, I'm, I'm fishing the tip, so slightly, slightly different. But the same idea, bite indication. Bite indication is spot on. You know there's a fish there straight away. There's no chance of that fish being tethered for a long period of time. Uh, and yeah, it's great. And we will, like Gordon said earlier on, we will touch on every style or the majority of styles of fishing. We will do a bit of fly fishing. We'll, we'll get the lure rods out and we'll probably get the lures out today at some point because the conditions are looking bang on for it but yeah in my opinion feeder fishing for trout is yeah go for it give it a try it's great Well, the fish I lost here last, well, actually, I caught it, and I say lost, I went to put it back in the net, and it, it's just glided over the net. But, this one's just as big, but it's a male, and it's absolutely stunning. Where do you see this? Look at that. That just know the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Look at the fins. Don't stop me. That's really gorgeous. And this came on the worm. Two worms on a size 12 worm hook. Chopped worm. We sprinkling of maggots. Get them in the water.
pounds of weather conditions, Alex. You're a bit blowy. <laughs> Chairs already, but in the water. Absolute carnage. The mayhem continues. <laughs> trout after trout after char after, just fish constantly. The weather's absolutely wild. The wind's picked up something awful, but it's not putting these guys off. Two absolutely stunning wild brownies. So many double hookups today. Lovely. Well, first time for everyone. First time I've had a perch here. And it's broke the two pound barrier. And it ain't a bad looking fish either. Look at that. Again, a double worm. Chop worm in the window feeder, a couple of maggots, plugged with some ground bait. A two pound four perch and a pound arctic char. Well, no quite a pound, but that just no a stunning looking fish. Ow. Oh, he's posing. So the first vlog of game time comes to an end. Very blustery <laughs> end to the day. Uh, honestly, it must be about 30 mile an hour winds uh, coming down there. Wild, absolutely wild. It's cold now as well. So Bethies have lost their seats. <laughs> We've broken umbrellas. <laughs> still getting fish, but... Didn't put the fish off, definitely not. Uh, no, nah, it's been alright. It's been quite good. Plenty of trout. No, yeah, plenty, plenty of action. Nice big perch. And what we came for. A couple of nice Arctic char. That one you got was a absolute stunning fish. Love seeing them. Didn't, don't even mind that I didn't catch it. Okay. No, honestly, that's <laughs> just nice to see. Uh, but yeah, that's what we came for and that's what we got. So a great start to... Still getting bites. <laughs> great start to game time. Let's yeah. just see how long it continues. I think that's better to kind of screw yeah, things yeah. up for the next few days, isn't it? This week's not looking good, so... Uh, yeah. Estuaries, rivers, yeah. lochs. But next weekend, you never know. Never know. Chippy? Die, chippy. Die, fish and chips, come on. <laughs>